Greetings, gardeners. Here we are again with my good friend, Joe Hewitt. Um, Joe is on the island, uh, pretty close to permanent these days. He's getting there. And uh, we had big plans. Joe brought his drone. We were going to show you the Green Garden Guys place from the air. And we are going to wander around the nursery and show you all the great big trees we had going and so forth. And it's raining. So, next time. But we got a special treat anyway. I had plan B. Don't worry about a thing. So, um, I've been doing a custom grow here, as you know, uh, for Joe, because the last time he was around, we did the Jabotacaba thing, remember? Had all of those cool Jabotacaba varieties. Well, um, I decided we want to do a bit of a repeat and show you some of the other stuff that uh, Joe has shipped in here for me to grow for him and somewhat for you, too, because we have a lot of extras. Um, and so, uh, Joe, you want to uh, pick an item here, huh? What do you want to show? All right. Let's start with this one right in front of you. This is the uh, Eugenia Patricii. This little guy doesn't look like much, but uh, it's a Eugenia. Uh, probably the most common Eugenia you'll find on the island here would be Grumichama. Grumichama, and, yeah. Um, oh, it's Suriname Chair. Oh, yeah, of course, yeah. Suriname Chair. I always forget about that one. Mm -hmm. um, so they're related, but the, fl the fruit of the Eugenia Patricii is bright red. It's a very attractive um, berry, in fact. I'll show you guys what it looks like here. It's uh, very red and very similar in, in uh, size and the flesh to seed ratio as a common cherry. And I warn you, don't even try to read the page unless you speak Portuguese. Yeah. The book's printed in Brazil. <laughs> yeah, this is our Portuguese, <laughs> Brazilian fruit book here. So the, the, the size of this guy, he's littler than most of the stuff we were growing out there. Yeah. Uh, I think, what's this, was some of the last seed you sent in then, I think, it's, right? It's one of the younger plants, yeah. The newer stuff, yeah. okay, yeah. That's an interesting looking fruit. I've never eaten it. I did sample um, Eugenia ligustrifolium. I think that's what it was, a privet leaf. Oh, yes. Yeah, uh, now that one had a real good tasting blue colored fruit, kind of shaped like an olive. And the meat was decent, but that pit to flesh ratio was. Yeah. This looks more like cherry yeah. ratio, you know? It looks better. It looks better. And I have only heard a few people who tasted it and say it's pretty good. So we'll find out in a few years. Hey. Yeah. Uh, let's see, what else we got here? Uh, this guy right in front of me is Campomanesia guasimifolia. It's a. Uh, in the same uh, family as the Eugenia, the Myrtle family, or the Guava family, and uh, Campomanesia genus is pretty close to the Sidium genus of the common Guava. The fruits have a lot in common. The leaves look actually very similar. If I'm not mistaken, the, you actually can uh, call this Sidium, I believe, that the names can be interchangeable. I wouldn't be surprised if yeah. once upon a time they, mm -hmm. were, they were the same. Um, nowadays, in fact, yeah, it says one of the synony synonyms of this plant is Sidium guasimifolia. And the fruit does look very much like um, this guy here, like a guava. Well, we have guavas all over the island. Uh, they're running amok, some of them. Um, others are in people's gardens and so forth. But this one, I've never seen in Hawaii before. There's very few of them. I know of one person in Oahu with a fruiting tree, and that's about it. Hmm. So this is a rare guava. Indeed, indeed. Matter of fact, it's the only guava in Bill's nursery. Yeah, <laughs> that's true. Yeah, that no, hasn't come up as a yes, weed in a pot. No point talking about uh, yeah. growing guavas here on purpose. That's right. Yeah. All right, let's move over to uh, another branch of the Myrtle family, the Plinia. We sort of talked about this in the last video, but I'll talk a little bit more about them. This here is one I'm very excited about. It's Plinia inflata. It's a very unusual type of jabotacaba. You would never guess it was a jabotacaba. Uh, I don't know if this picture is really going to do it justice because it's a very large fruit that is like the size of a baseball or even a softball. You can see it's uh, this guy right over here, this yellow fruit. And I know one guy who just tasted it in, um, where is it, Ecuador, I believe, I think is where this is native, mm -hmm. and he spoke very highly of it. Well, so. I, I haven't spoke with anybody in Hawaii who's tasted it yet, no. so I, I guess this is going to be a, a, a big deal. We're all going to get to be educated. No one's growing it here, well, 
some people are now, but uh, mm -hmm. it's famously sold by a guy named Jim West, who's a long time mm -hmm. rare fruit grower. I believe lived in Hawaii for a long time and then moved to Ecuador to set up shop. And mm. he sends a lot of seeds over here to Oscar Jate, a fruit lovers, resells yeah. them. Yeah. Well, we'll see. Uh, so far, I like all the plenty I've eaten. Jabota Cobb is a favorite of mine. I enjoy it. So, we got another oh, yeah. one, yeah? We got one last Jabota Cava. Also, looks very different from your standard Jabota Cabas. This is the Cambuca Plinia edulis. And Cambuca tastes very similar to a Jabota Cava, but um, it's much larger, like about yay big. And it's times. orange color. Yeah. And it's orange, yeah. But people say it tastes like orange jello. It doesn't really, it looks like orange jello. It's mm. got a gelatinous texture to the inside of it. Interesting. Yeah. Now, I've, I've seen the plants for sale here uh, every once in a while. Uh, yeah. The nurseryman sale in Hilo and this, this thing sometimes shows up. I've never eaten it though. Apparently there are not, there's not a lot of fruit around the island because mm -hmm. it doesn't seem to be in the farmer's market at, at all. Yeah, very rare, very rare. Mm -hmm. There are a few people with fruiting trees in Hawaii. Not very many though. Hmm. It looks almost like Ficus benjamina or something. So oh yeah, kind of... oh, I know what you mean, yeah. yeah. Uh, all right, so that's it for the Myrtle family. Uh, why don't we talk about that Chempadak right there? Ah, Durian Chempadak. Yeah, this is this, I don't want to confuse you guys. <laughs> they call this Durian Chempadak. It's not a durian, it's a Chempadak. And I suppose that in Borneo, where this comes from, they think that it resembles durian in texture. It's got more of a creamy texture than a normal Chempadak mm. would. And the fruit looks very different. I don't have a picture of it on the, but um, it's got um, kind of a knobbly, like instead of the tiny little spiky things you see on a jackfruit or a durian, on this particular variety okay. they're, they're larger. That's what makes it look Like different. a durian. Yeah. Yeah. But, yeah. Hmm. yeah. And these are, um, Chempadak often is tough to grow from seeds. They tend to, um, they tend to damp off a lot, but we've had really good success with this one. This, there was one Chempadak we had here, or one uh, Articarpus we had here, I can't remember which one it was, that hated this place. Oh, yeah. Elasticus. Elasticus, Elasticus. Uh, Elasticus. Yeah, yeah, that was it. Oh, it hated, it hated yeah. Mountain View. Couldn't stand it. All the others seem to be uh, quite happy to mediumly happy here, yeah. so. Yeah, I, you might want to plant one of these guys. I, I I mean, judging I mean, from what I'm seeing here, they like it in Mountain View. It seems to be, yeah. You never know when you bring stuff in from Brazil or Asia, Java, or some other place and say, okay, here you are in Hawaii, uh, good luck. We'll see what happens, right? Yeah. Okay, what you want now? Uh, ah. I only got one of these, but I wanted to show it to people because it's a really interesting plant. This is called Inca Peanuts. I don't, I don't even recall the Latin name. Also known as Sacha Inchi. Hmm. And some people may have heard of it because the, the nuts are sold in, in health food stores, often roasted and salted. Um, and they'll, uh, they'll tell you at the health food store that this plant uh, makes nuts that are very high in omega-3 fatty acids. A lot of people are trying to get more of in their diet. And usually we have to go to like fish or yeah. some other things to find that. Right, instead of taking fish oil, eat some sacha inchi peanuts oh. and uh, maybe you'll be healthy. And they, they say it actually has an aftertaste that's fishy, so maybe that's oh, yum. in the oil. <laughs> <laughs> wow, peanuts with anchovies. Yeah, yeah it's got a, a, the pod looks a lot like star anise, but then when they extract the nuts, the nuts look like half peanuts. Yeah. I've never eaten it. I Really, I'd heard of the plant before, but I've never had too much contact with it until mm -hmm. it started growing in the nursery, and next thing I knew, it turned into a vine. It made contact with my backside as I was trying to get down <laughs> the aisle. Um, it, it, I didn't realize this thing yeah. is a vine. I imagine it must get pretty good size. You know, I when it started growing, it looked like a tree for the first that's like, what six I thought. months. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, it started doing viney things. That's what I'm saying. Why? Yeah, yeah. when it went to the viney thing, I went, huh? They, they are self-fertile, mm. so you only need one. They make male and female flowers in the same vine. And judging by the way it's taken off, I'd say it'll probably cover a fence pretty quickly. Easily, very yeah. easily. I suppose it's evergreen. Mm, yeah. So. We can use it uh, as shade lath over your shade house. Yeah. Okay. And How about that one? Oh, yes. This is another one that I only have one survivor on this one. This is uh, the holy grail of Anonis for me. It's uh, Anona crassiflora, <laughs> known as Marolo. This one has been really tough to, um, to germinate and keep alive for a lot of people. 
uh, just getting into germinate at all has been mm -hmm. the struggle, as is the case with a lot of anonas. By the time the seeds get to you from halfway across the world, they're um, they're in a state of hibernation that is difficult to break. Yeah, <laughs> right, dead. Yes. <laughs> and some people uh, treat anona seeds with um, various chemicals. Gibberellic acid. Gibberellic acid, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, we didn't ha instead of doing that, we just let this thing sit for a really long time, yeah. right? a year, year and a half. Planted them out, nothing came up, nothing came up. I went through, I cracked some of the seeds open and said, nope, the seeds are not dead. And so I took them all out of the flats they were in and just clustered everything in uh, gallon pots together, like 60 seeds in a gallon pot, you know, or a four inch pot, covered it. And all of a sudden we started getting them. I haven't told Joe yet that I think I got two more of these that came up over there. Very exciting. Yeah, I don't know if I can keep them alive or not because yeah. it is uh, it's a picky thing. It the, looks a bit like cherimoya, yeah? The fruit is, uh, they're very large and they have, it's kind of like a, the way it breaks apart on the inside is similar to soursop, but it's yellow and has a very rustic exterior, as you can mm. see. And uh, People, if you go onto Google or, or YouTube and search for Marolo, which is the common name of this fruit in Brazil, there's a couple of videos of people eating them, and they look really good. Happy? They look they happy? They look happy, yeah. <laughs> so I hope, hope that's us in five, ten years. Happy is good. Yeah, well, you never know what will happen. Yeah, yeah. And then sometimes you pick a fruit from its native environment, and it just doesn't work out as well in other places. On the other hand, I've had the reverse experience. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. And, and this is one actually, you know, this is the last one we got here, I think. That's the last um, one, yeah. And this here's the Achacha. Um, that's the uh, Garcinia humilis uh, Bolivian mangosteen is another name for it, too. This is uh, one of the mangosteen relatives that Joe recently brought some fresh fruit from a friend over here. We've been gobbling it, and this is absolutely delicious. It's a big deal down in Australia. They're growing a lot of them down there now. Uh, it's starting to catch on here in Hawaii, and there are a few trees. Uh, we have lots and lots and lots of them. And you look at this beauty. Is that fine or yeah. what, huh? But the thing I like about it is I've been messing with mangosteens for years. They damp off so easy. they got to be in the shade for the first three, four years, or else they burn up and die. This thing does not damp off. Every seed has grown that you've sent in, and some hmm. of them were polyembryonic, and I even split them into yeah. two trees. Um, and so it's really tough, not picky, seems like it puts up with full sun. Um, Joe's brought a lot of stuff in here, but this is one that I've gotten excited about, and I planted six trees on the farm yeah. here already. Maybe do more, but uh, well, this, you know, is, this is a great one for people more. at high elevations in Hawaii. Really? As you can see how well it's doing here. It Stupid. comes comes from um, highlands of Bolivia, it's where it's native to, so it, it actually likes it a little cooler. I'm not going to complain. In fact, it might, I don't know, it might even be better here than at sea level. How about that? Um, but there are a few people uh, with fruiting trees. I, I was shocked when I came to um, Hilo last year in the summertime. I went to the Hilo Farmer's Market, and there was a woman with a big <laughs> basket of achachas for sale oh. and with the sign that said mangosteen did you see it uh, did you get to it after the horticultural genius of the ballpoint pen though no i so, was there before him some guy came yeah. through and wrote Garc garcinia humilis i was i was shocked in fact i immediately posted on facebook for people uh to come down i think that may i don't know maybe that was uh why that guy who was kind of a fruit nerd came and wrote the Latin name on the Probably. On the yeah, I, I, you yeah. caught her right in Hilo. I saw her at the Maku'u. Oh, yeah? Yeah. The, the story she told, right, you probably heard this, is she uh, went to a plant sale about seven, eight years ago or something, something like that. that. Order, yeah. And they sold it to her as a Bolivian mangosteen, and she planted it. And now all of a sudden she had fruit she didn't know what to do with. And I hope, I hope she's selling it all. Well, you know, the, her fruit was a little more on the yellowish skin color side. The stuff yeah. you brought me here um, was a little bit more on the reddish side. And in fact, we actually have some that we can show. Do you? Oh, yeah. Go yeah. Ahead. Why don't we do that, huh? Yeah, these are uh, a, a little more orange or red in color than any I had seen previously. I, I don't mm -hmm. know uh, why. But this is just, this is the color they achieve when they're actually ripe. Really, really ripe. I think that woman, she, she was new to the pick. tree, so she didn't know when to pick them. She yeah. picked them a little too soon. They're still good. They're just more sour. Well, here, you grab one of those and start peeling. I'm telling you. Yeah. The I, way the way they, uh, I learned this from the Australian uh -huh. uh, achacha farm. You take your fingernail and you just make a little indentation, and then you then you squeeze it, and it just comes. Oh, and it comes, comes right, right out. How yeah. about that? Well, very, we'll see what happens easy. here. 
and it's got this kind of a snow cone look on the in, on the inside. Yeah, look at that. That is pretty cool. Yeah. And did you know? Did I mention that these are edible? You can um, eat the skin. You can. Well, they're very bitter. But what mm -hmm. you can do is uh, make a, make a tea out of them. Mm. And um, then, and no doubt, it is anti carcinogenic, and you will live forever. You will live forever. Yes. <laughs> Always. That's a fact. If it tastes terrible, you will live forever. <laughs> So the inside looks a little bit like a small mangosteen, and it doesn't segment as well, but it does. This is actually some segments to this, although I usually smash it all up if I try that. But, uh, you know, talk about things tasting good in one place and another. I mean, from Thailand, the mangosteen is a cult fruit, okay? And they claim that it's one of the finest tasting fruits on earth that's very expensive and so on. Here in Hawaii, we have mangosteens, and they're okay. They're okay. But this is better. I think it is, at least on the Hawaiian Hawaiian grown. It's got a little. It's got a little more flavor than a mango. It's a steam. little more resiny tasting, yeah, maybe. Yeah. Mm. Oh man. Mm. That, mm. that is. Let me see. Um, all right. Obviously sweet. Quite wet. Very refreshing. Uh, but but it's almost. It's. If it wasn't for the fact that there is some astringent or acidity in this, it might even be too sweet to be refreshing, but it's got mm. enough acidity. And it keeps coming on. It's almost like, I mean, this is like eating soda pop or candy or something. It's so sweet. The only thing about it that is a little bit sad, the pit-to-meat ratio is not that great. A mangosteen's better with the pit-to-meat ratio. Yeah, yeah, it definitely has big seeds. But you can suck on the seeds and the flavor keeps coming. Keeps for a while. coming. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it keeps can, coming. Yeah. It reminds me of lemonade. That's always the first thing that comes to mind. Well, that's what I wanted to get here from yeah. you. Tell me, what did you think? Yeah. Yeah. It just reminds me of lemonade. The first time I had it, they were not as ripe as these. They were more sour. And then it's even more like a, like a lemony flavor. Hmm. The acidity is pretty moderate and when they're fully ripe. So it's like a lemonade where someone put way too much sugar in it. Mm hmm. <laughs> You know, this, you're right. This does just keeps coming. Yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm almost down to the pit, but it isn't stopping yet. Anyway, I have to do a video, so I guess I'm going to have to quit sucking the seed. <laughs> anyway, so um, this is, again, this is really just the start of the tip of the iceberg of some of the stuff you brought in. Um, and uh, we still have more of it up there. And so if it was not so rainy today, we'd be talking more about it. But I do believe we're going to be seeing more of Joe. Um, and so, thanks a lot for watching. Aloha and hang loose, folks. <laughs>